Chinese tea? Yeah, no, all he said was zhou, because mm. I said shishi. So. Oh, very good. Let's go now through the doors of time. We start out on our journey to Shenzhen, where my father's family was from. The Zhao family. This is the character for Zhao, pronounced Zhou in Mandarin. It is a surname from the Zhou dynasty in the southeastern province. This is my grandfather, my father's father, and his name, we call him Gung Gung and Popo, his wife. This is the country of China. Shenzhen is located in the southeast side of China, down below next to Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. Hong Kong is connected to China by land. Therefore, all you need to do is take a train. The ride from Hong Kong to Shenzhen was about an hour and 45 minutes and basically you couldn't really tell you were changing countries until you went through immigration on the China side. How did our Zhao or Dou family get to Hawaii? It was Tet Min Zhao, my great grandfather, who immigrated from China in the late 1800s to Hawaii to do missionary work. My third cousin Sam Zhao picked us up from the hotel. We had gotten in contact with him through their family reaching out to ours when our family land was being sold to the government. So they were reaching out to our family so that we would sign off on the sale of the land. They finally got in touch with us, but it wasn't until after the land had been sold. Nonetheless, we met up and were able to get to know each other. So when we arrived in Shenzhen, he came to our hotel and picked us up. at our village and basically walked around. We were trying to find some locations of where our family used to live, where Tetman and his lineage used to live before he moved to Hawaii, but we weren't really sure where it was, so we just walked around and took some pictures. We um, saw a lot of our family walking around because everyone that lives in the village is from the clan, so they're related to us in some shape or form. We did bump into a cute little man that we were talking with, and here he is pictured here. Our family in this region called Guangdong speaks Cantonese. So Sam was speaking Cantonese with this cute little man. Doesn't he look like us? <laughs> uh, we visited with him for a little bit, and then we went off to see our family temple. up there right at the top represents our temple our ancestors portrait was placed and displayed prominently in the temple this is the shrine where we did our three respectful bows Sam got a lighter and we each took three incense to do our three bows out of respect and place in the incense urn. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Hawaii. <laughs> I'm 
แม่ตัวซีไปมากกว่าซึ่งก็ไม่ไรดีก็มีเคสสุดเมื่ออยู่วันสุดท็อปคูแต่ไม่ได้ก็แต่ไม่ได้เสร็จแล้วแต่นักการเมืองที่ตัวนี้โอปโอเชฟไปฮิสทรีไม่ไรดีOn the temple walls are a list of names of contributors who've donated to the village, the clan, and the temple. Here, Sam is describing to me some of our family members who've also contributed. Married to blind family. Your father's yes. sister. Okay, so my cousin. Okay. And she lives in Baltimore. Baltimore. Mm. Okay. My whole family. Mm. Your father's sister. Yes. How many siblings does your father have? My father has maybe six. And the sister's daughter lives in Baltimore. Yeah. And her name is up here? Uh, this is uh, my father's my father's sister. My oh, father's oh, sister. No. We have this access is, uh, to our family genealogy book called Jia Pu. This right here, this first character? It is a record mm -hmm. of our family names from generations back. We have a relative who's been keeping track of our genealogy. She gave a copy to my cousin Janelle who made copies for each of the siblings in my father's generation. I took this genealogy book with me to Shenzhen. Here in our family temple, Sam is describing to me where we are in that genealogy book. It was a very sacred and special time. Sixth branch. The next adventure was very exciting. A few years back, the government had obtained our land to build a freeway. When they were digging, they found remains of our family members. Out of respect for our family and our ancestors, they offered to give us a special plot of land in an existing graveyard. They made a beautiful display for our family remains. This is the first time any one of our family, even Sam, are going to see it. It's really exciting, and we're on our way up to go and see it now. Next stop was an invitation to their humble apartment and to meet the rest of their family. My father's second cousins, Sam's father and brother, Sam's mother, Sam's wife Apple, and his daughter Lily. Uncle G, Uncle G, the movie Mulan and how she relied on her ancestors. Very much like Mulan, Hannah and I relied on our ancestors to help us to find what we needed to, which was our great-grandpa Chun Loi's last residence, 
where he was buried, and our family Jiapu or genealogical record. We had very little to go on when we left Shenzhen to go to Zhongshan. Here is the story of how we got there. With a desire to learn Mandarin, I registered for a program at a university in Taiwan. Wondering where my family immigrated from in China and whether it was close to Taiwan, I decided to do some research. Looking through some family history materials that we had from great uncles, such as my grandfather Ken Leong's brothers and things that they would have gathered and shared with us, I found out that our family was indeed from a province very close to Taiwan. With that information, I started to reach out to relatives to see what they knew. I had found out that several relatives had gone into China. However, with many stories, they did not have a lot of information on where our family village was. Therefore, I reached out to a friend who worked for the Family History Center for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. She went in to speak to her supervisor, asking for his help in finding an expert that knew Chinese ancestry. At the time that she was speaking with her director, there was a gentleman that coincidentally happened to be in the family history library, overheard her conversation, and generously offered his phone number and name so that I might be able to call him. I did call him and he gave me the information for an organization in China that helps American born Chinese or Chinese that have left the country find their ancestors. They gave me an email of a woman, not knowing whether that woman was still employed by that organization. I took that email and was able to get in contact with the organization prior to going into China. That is the only information that I had prior to leaving Shenzhen and going into Zhongshan. Our first miracle, we had no idea how we were getting from the Shenzhen train station to Zhongshan. We had so many people help us figure out that we needed to get on this bus that would take us to the ferry. spoke Chinese for us and helped us get a taxi to our hotel. After a good night's sleep, I called Mr. Joe, our contact for the bureau. He said he wouldn't be able to take us anywhere that day because he was busy taking a queen to her village. After further probing, I found out that this queen was none other than Hawaii's Narcissus Queen, Jamie Jong. After getting permission to call her, I explained to her that I too was a Narcissus princess. With that connection, she was more than willing to invite us to join them on their excursion that day. to go to Guangzhou for these two days. If we'd gone there, we would not have been able to meet Jamie. They then invited us to dinner that night with them. Prior to dinner, we went to tour an exquisite furniture store. It was here that we sat down for refreshments and I sat next to a gentleman. He asked what we were doing there in China. We told him that we were doing family history. He proceeded to ask me about my family names and then he started to write some things down. He also disclosed that he was the director of the bureau that was helping me to find my village. He got on the phone immediately, called my contact, Mr. Joe, and gave him some information on how to help me the following day. 
Not only was he the director and could help me further with regarding the bureau, but he also told me to remember to use a particular name that my great grandfather Chen Loy would be referred to as in the genealogy books and not by the name Chen Loy. He made sure that I knew to look for another name to be able to identify our family lineage within our Jiapu. Another miracle, don't you think? The next day it was our turn to go to our village. We started out with the village of Da Che, which was Chen Loy's wife. We start out at the temple as always. There wasn't much more that we could see because we didn't have any more information. So we just visited the temple. to Great Grandpa Chun Loy's village. Great Grandpa Chun Loy moved to America or Hawaii in the late 1800s. He got married to our grandfather, Ken Leung's mother. They had two children, she died. Then he got married again, had six more children. And then when he retired, he decided to move back to China. He passed away in 1951. However, he got married and had another child, Quan Xiu, who just passed away a few years ago as of this taping. He lived in Hong Kong, and he used to come back often to Grandpa, Great Grandpa Chen Loy's home here in Zhongshan, in the in this village. Now let's look at the temple from our family village. that woman standing at the entrance of the temple when I was paying my respect to my ancestors the officers and translators were talking with her to see if she knew where great-grandpa Chun Loy lived and where we could find our Japu miraculously this one woman being at the right place at the right time was able to tell us exactly where great-grandpa great Chun Loy lived as well as the old man that had the Japu Remember, a Japu during the Revolutionary War was usually destroyed. The fact that it was still around and still taken care of by someone in the village that was still alive. What a great blessing it was to have her there and to be able to help us to get what we needed that day. We then proceeded to walk to the old man's house. However, when we got there, he was in the shower, so we had to wait outside. So we took some pictures. You may have noticed that Jamie Jung, the Narcissus Queen, joined us this day as well. She came for support as well as to translate. However, a great blessing was given to us with the other three translators. The original translators were not able to come, so they brought on these three young guards that usually work at the Sun Yat-sen memorial but they were pulled off that job to translate for us today they had proved to be extremely helpful that day as well as dear friends to this day yet another wonderful miracle now let's go into the old man's house <music> Huang 
Queenie is sitting next to the old man. Through our visiting with him, we established that he did in fact know great grandpa Chen Loy, remembers him moving to Hawaii and his son coming to visit him um, and making sure that the house was nice after he passed away in 1951. Consequently, as we were sitting there, I asked my translator, Queenie, to ask him about the Japu. His initial response was to shake his head and wave his hand, meaning no. I asked Queenie to please ask him why he's saying no. He said it's too hard to get. I asked Queenie to please tell him that I would help him to find it or get it. I wasn't going to travel this far and not at least look at the Japu. With that being said, he got up quietly, slowly. About a minute later, he came back with this. Thank you. This is for the whole village, right? Oh, whole village. Juku is for the whole village, right? So there's another person that has the Jufu also? Yes, he has the electronic. Electronic. Yeah. And they're in Hong Kong. This. All of this information they have yes. online. Make, make it in a yeah. trolley. You can see it. Like yes, yes, but we are asking oh. to have it. Okay, that would be good. Because of the name that director gave us, the one other than Chen Loi, we were able to find our lineage in this Jupu. The Jupu is the whole town. The Japu is our family. So in this Jupu, we were able to locate our lineage. The electronic version of this Jupu that they said that they had, they are not finished with it yet. However, they did send to me electronically our Japu. And here's a picture of it. Notice that after this electronic version, there's a translated version of our family tree. It was translated by a kind gentleman, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that I met in Taiwan after this China trip. After viewing the Ju Pu and taking a few pictures, we went off to see Great Grandpa Chen Loi's home. visit to great grandpa Chen Loi's home, they took us to a wonderful seafood lunch. We received the Japu electronically by the time I returned back to the hotel. 
I'm still waiting for the Jupo electronically. I've made lifelong friends. My ancestors pulled through. It's been a wonderful visit to Shenzhen and Zhongshan. May we continue to learn about our ancestors and honor them.